So, spoiler alert, the truck is not back on the road, or I wouldn't be standing in here right now. Um, this was a huge pain in the butt. A huge pain in the butt. Um, I jumped back and forth between the new engine and the old engine. Uh, we had a lot of roadblocks, so whichever was the easiest dopamine hit, or the least frustrating path, that's the one that I worked on. So, editing this video has been an absolute nightmare, because the footage is all over the place. Through the power of movie magic, I assume it will all seamlessly be edited together and uh, appear to be in the right order for you. Um, but we got a lot of work to do, so uh, let's get to it. First up, we have to remove everything connected to the engine. The drive shaft, the exhaust pipes, the fuel lines, wiring harness, coolant lines, actually the whole radiator had to come out, plus the clutch arm, all the engine sensors, the speedometer cable, which is literally just a metal cable that spins off of the transmission and turns the speedometer gauge. I love 1960s tech. Most of this I got out leaned over the engine bay, but for the deep stuff I found it easier to just get nice and comfortable up close and personal inside the engine bay. The engine manual doesn't tell you how to do this. I gotta assume they're like mission impossibling themselves off of a crane to get to some of this stuff. Most of the accessories came off very easily and very boringly, but removing the shifter was kind of cool. First of all, every spider that has ever lived in this truck apparently made a pilgrimage to die in this transmission tunnel. But anyway, you'd think that these pins hold the shifter in. Like pins, right? Wrong. Do not try to remove these pins. This whole assembly is spring-mounted, and it only takes a Herculean amount of force to depress that spring. Or, in my case, five shots of PB Blaster and a small man-boy. Honestly, I've seen weaker springs used in valve trains. But once it's out, it's kind of a cool assembly to look at. Also, adding this to the needs a few shots of spray paint pile. The video really makes the puddle look smaller, but this is about five gallons of gasoline that I spilled on the garage floor while taking the fuel lines off. It's a good lesson. Assume whatever container you have is not big enough. Have a second, bigger one in sight. This is easily the closest I've come to burning my house and the whole neighborhood down. So with everything disconnected, the internet says you can just lift the engine and transmission out together. Easy enough with my two-ton engine crane, right? Wrong. After two days of these time lapses, myth busted, you cannot lift the engine and transmission out together. YouTubers can disagree with me all they want, I assume heavy-duty trucks like mine are just a lot less common than regular C10s, so no one runs into the interferences I did. For a C20, you have to cut the crossmember out of the frame to get them both out together. Okay, so there's three pieces. The blue part is the oil pan of the old engine. That connects to the bell housing, which covers up the clutch and the big flywheel. And then all of that connects to the transmission, connects to the drive shaft. You can see I've already removed the drive shaft. We won't be needing to do that since I'm not pulling the transmission anymore. This transmission is one of the dirtiest things I've ever seen. Uh, it's caked on grease, so that's gonna be fun to remove. And then the most important part is the transmission support. That is riveted onto the frame. That is a special feature of the three-quarter ton trucks to be extra secure. So basically, if you try to tilt the engine up and out, the bottom of this will hit this. If you try to lift it up to pull it forward, the top of the shifter, which you can kind of see right there, will hit the bottom of the frame. Uh, now, you can see I already tore out the inside of the interior. You can see the steering wheel right there through the bottom of the floor. Um, so what we have to do now is split the engine basically here. We're going to support the transmission at the back with the jack, uh, and then we should be able to lift the engine and the bell housing out. I have no idea how to reconnect these after we put it all together, but that's where we are. Okay, so we almost learned the hard way that the uh, transmission is not bolted to anything except for the bell housing. Thank you, internet. Um, I have a jack. I have two straps underneath. And I have one strap. Oh God, that rust, huh? I'll have to fix that. I have one strap running under this yoke as like a backup. Um, really hope it don't drop it on the ground. 
So the time lapse did not capture the kerthunk that the engine made when it popped off the transmission, nor my panic that I just dropped something on the floor. Turns out the engine comes out pretty easily once you get all the bolts out. I've talked about my love of lifting things with this engine lift before, but I am glad I sprung for the two ton lift. I got all the wires and the accessories off the engine, so it came out in one shot, but there are quite a few time lapses of me lifting the whole front of the truck up by the transmission or engine bolts. Make sure you take those out and always buy a bigger lift than you think you need. A bit cathartic, like removing a tumor, but also a bit soul crushing because I better clean this up now because there's no way I'm going to be motivated to do it once the new engine gets in. But let's salvage what we can off of this thing. Believe it or not, this bell housing, get it, looks like a bell, is orange, but it is covered in such a thick layer of grease that you would never be able to tell. The bell housing covers the pressure plate and the clutch and is not filled with oil. And so it's just filled with oil leaks and dirt from the road because the baffles that protect it do not do a good job. Underneath the bell housing is this three piece assembly that's bolted together with some of the highest torques in the whole engine. It's made of the pressure plate, the clutch and the flywheel. The pressure plate is this Dune Part 2 popcorn bucket looking thing that I'm taking off right here. It's basically spring fingers that press the clutch up against the flywheel. Once that comes off, the clutch kind of just falls out. That's the brake disc looking thing that's in the middle. You can see the springs on it. There's a spline shaft in the middle that connects to the transmission, and then the clutch connects to the flywheel just through the friction of the pads on it. I'm inspecting it because I've never seen a truck clutch before, but also because it looks pretty new. Uh, we're actually going to reuse this whole assembly. You can also see the confusion on my face because these six bolts were like ground down by something. I don't think from the engine spinning, but we're not going to be reusing those and I have no idea what could have caused that. We actually end up needing a big breaker bar because uh, these things are really torqued on. But everything came off okay, and again, this flywheel looks fine. Crazy heavy though, I mean, I guess the flywheel, and some jerk oversprayed it with orange spray paint at some point. We're not going to fix that. We are going to reuse other parts off this engine. I wasn't thinking about that at the time. I was just so fed up with the mess that I had to get this thing out of the way. That tire is also filled with coolant from when it leaked everywhere when I took it out. I really want to clean the garage. There's tools everywhere, and this was my smallest victories. So I genuinely appreciate the patina of this truck, and the rust inside the engine bay never bothered me until I saw this, and this is disgusting. I promised you some good cleaning montages, and I think I have some even better ones coming up in the next video, but I am pretty proud of my GoPro vacuum mount uh, for a good first person view of scraping all this crap out of the engine bay. Basically 50 years of an oil leak compiled with road dust form this like incredibly thick skin of sludge. And when you put engine degreaser on it, it turns it into like a glue that just gets stuck to you, to your clothes, to everything. And so I found it best to dry scrape everything with a paint scraper and vacuum it up. But yeah, it looks like this whole thing took a mud bath. It's horrifying. I thought maybe it was paint, but you can see that some of these parts are painted, so it's not that. And then I thought maybe I was scraping off some kind of rubberized coating or like a anti-rust layer. I do think this grease is preventing the whole thing from rusting. But I think it's just really dirty, disgustingly dirty. I ruined quite a few shirts doing this and was just generally a sweaty, greasy mess for this entire weekend. But looking back at this footage, it was kind of worth it. You know those rolled ice cream places that scrape the ice cream right into the cone? That's all I was thinking about.
but do not eat. Do not eat. There's a couple spots where I'm pretty sure I'm actually scraping up mouse poop that has just congealed into one mass underneath all the brake lines. And, uh, I'm getting disgusted just, just watching this. One last big scrape, because I know you've been eyeing up that chunk right there, and let's just fast forward through the rest. So this next step took just about as long, but is way less interesting to watch. I spray down the engine bay with degreaser and then using a combination of toothbrushes, wire brushes, and the wire wheel, just scrape it down to the bare metal. A lot of wiping, a lot of cleaning, but eventually we're ready for paint. I didn't think this needed high temp engine paint, but now that I'm rewatching this, I'm wondering if I'm gonna regret that decision. But a couple of coats of flat black and it's looking a lot better. Good enough to put an engine on top of anyway. So in my last video, I told you the truck would be back on the road when I posted this, and apparently in three months, all I've done is remove the old engine and strip and paint the engine bay. It's not entirely true. This was about a third of the footage that I took over the last three months. I decided this was a good stopping point for this video for a couple reasons. The first is it's pretty hard to cut a longer video, or maybe I'm just bad at it, but also my longer YouTube videos don't do as well. Again, maybe I'm bad at it. But anyway, I think this is a good stopping point. We'll pick up the build of the new engine in the next video. And I don't always push the like, subscribe, and ring that bell at the end of my videos, but now's actually a good time to do that because I know I'll be posting at least two more videos in pretty rapid succession. So if you wanna see how this thing turns out, follow along.